Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I need your help. After you watch this video, if you can give me a solution to my problem, that would be great. I would really appreciate it. If you can't give me a solution, look in the description of this video, and it'll take you out to the uh, Fusion 360 forum posting that I made. If this topic resonates with you, or if you also would like a solution to this, jump into this thread. You could leave a comment. You could give me a thumbs up. Um, but the more like activity that shows up on a thread, the more likely it is to get the attention of the people at Autodesk. So don't just jump in there and put a bunch of useless stuff. That wouldn't be cool. But but if this is um, you know something that interests you, uh, please come out to the forum thread or this topic in the forum and give me a thumbs up or, or leave a comment. Uh, maybe we can group think our way through this problem. So once again, this will be in the description of this video, along with a link where you can download this file if you'd like to. So here's my problem. Where I work, we have a lot of parts with uh, really complicated profiles and shapes, and they'll have fillets that run all the way around the outside of the part, which is no big deal. But uh, the visual requirements are extremely high. These parts that we make have to look like jewelry. So this is not one of our parts, but it's, you know, representative gives the example, uh, or it gives, illustrates the point. So we have to make these fillets on the outside edges of the parts. They have to look beautiful with jewelry-like finishes. Uh, many of the parts that we do at work are actually a lot more complicated than this, but this is simple, illustrates the point. So I want to find a way to do this in Fusion 360. First tool path I tried is Scala. And if I turn the model off, you can see what Scala gave me. I don't like Scala because it has, it kind of has these weird erratic motions. It's, it's not consistent. And it has all these strange little lead in and lead out moves. Everywhere that happens, that's going to leave a witness mark. And uh, I just, I don't like how the edges of it, uh, you know, don't match the part, right? The part, the edge of the fillet should look very crisp. It should be very clearly delineated. And uh, these tool paths aren't like that. You can see where this breaks up here a little bit. So scallop is not uh, not going to be the strategy for me. I try to do all of the good things that you're supposed to do uh, for additional offset. I made that equal negative the tolerance. So. This is the tolerance of the toolpath. I used an expression to make that negative. So what it does is it, it offsets the uh, toolpath in from the edge by the same value as the tolerance. That helps clean up the edges, but uh, still didn't give me what I wanted. So not, not going to be the strategy for me. The next one I tried was Morph Spiral, which is a cool strategy. But you can see what it did. Same thing. Edges are not crisp. I have lots of little uh, lead-ins and lead-outs. It's not going to look good on the part, and it's not going to give a nice, crisp, uh, clearly defined uh, edge of the fillet. And let's see what else. And it just gets weird, right? So it gets a little, little funky on the edges. So morph spiral, not going to be the strategy. Flow. Flow is better. Flow is definitely making a cleaner toolpath. Uh, it still has these weird moves though. And the edges are still not like crisp. You know, remember the fillet should be like, you know, very, very consistent. The edge should be very apparent. And uh, when you have uh, stuff like this, you see, this is really not going to give the look and appearance that's required. Or the product and uh but you know what this isn't awful this little way it's transitioning down there but i still think that you're, you may possibly see that every everywhere where it's going from one tool path to the next i think that could show up on the part so more or flow is better but still not the one morph this is a pretty cool tool path and uh definitely it's looking better I like how consistent it is. The edges 
they look good. You can see it's following the edge of the fillet. Uh, I don't don't love this transition, but but this is definitely maybe the best looking one so far. And morph is interesting. The way that morph works is you pick chains. So you pick one chain, you pick another chain, and it tries to morph between those two chains and give you your toolpath. Now you notice one of my chains is the edge of the fillet. The other chain is offset from the part. So this is one weird thing about morph. Let me just redo the chains. So let me clear out the chains. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick the top of the fillet, and I'll pick the bottom of the fillet. So you can see what it looks like. I'm going to say OK. And now there, it, it morphed between the two curves, just like it's supposed to. And it looks good from this view. Problem is, it's not actually going to be able to machine the entire fillet, right? So you can imagine the uh, tool has to uh, it has to get down, right? The tip of the ball has got to get down here in order to do the whole fillet, and right now it can't. So the way to solve that problem, what I did. I made a sketch. I took the profile of the solid, I offset it, and the radius of the tool, and go back to morph. Let me select my chains. So I'll pick the top of the fillet. I'll pick that offset curve. Now it'll let the tool get down to the edge. So definitely looks better. Uh, I don't love having to do this offset thing. I'll tell you why. First of all, depending on your part, it could be a lot of work, take a lot of time. It doesn't seem like it should be necessary. And two, depending on your part geometry, it's just not as simple as offsetting the outside profile of the part. So if the part curves a lot, and you do this tack, you do this strategy, what you're going to do is wind up machining a lot of air. You're going to have a lot of wasted motion. So morph is probably the best one so far, but still not perfect. But it definitely is the cleanest looking one up to this point. So finally, there's this tool path called blend. And blend may not show up uh, by default, what you have to do is go up to uh, Preferences and Preview Features. Then you have to check Blend Strategy. You have to turn it on. So Blend is, uh, it, it kind of comes across as like a more advanced version of Morph. So just like Morph, you have to pick Drive, or, uh, drive curves. And I was able to just pick the top of the fillet, the bottom of the fillet. And this strategy is intelligent enough. I don't have to, you know, offset things like I did with Morph. I like that a lot. So Blend definitely seems like, you know, it's headed in the right direction. Blend lets you use uh, step overs. So I don't have to like physically tell it make 10 passes or 20 passes. I can just give it a step over and, uh, it calculates that. And it does do a nice job. You can see it makes really nice crisp edges that match the you know the edge of the fillet. That looks good. The bottom edges look good. I like all that. And I like that I don't have to work really hard to get this. What I don't like is it still has these weird little motions where it's Transitioning from one tool path to the next. These will leave witness marks in the part. So this one's really close, but it's still not perfect. What would be ideal is if this tool path had one lead in and then could do constant contact and just spiral 
all the way around the part. Just keep spiraling until it covers the whole surface and then lead off. That would be perfect. But this one's close, but it's still not ideal. So if you have to make parts like this, maybe maybe you've run into this problem as well. Maybe you have a strategy. Um, I don't know. There's there's other things you can do here, and I'll just throw a few little tips out. When I'm working with these, I like to use the parameters. So for instance, in height, bottom height, I'll type in negative underscore tool corner radius. What that does is it, it automatically offsets this down for the to account for the radius of the tool. You have to do that uh, to allow the, the tool to become tangent to the edge of the fillet. Other things that I uh, use, sometimes I'll use this. There's certain tool paths where this expression is useful, this is tolerance, and I'll I'll type that in. So like, oh, uh, let's see, we scallop, for instance. Additional offset. I'll type in negative tolerance. That way it matches this value. And uh, certain toolpaths, you want to do that because it'll help clean up the edges of the toolpath. If you see the, like, the water falling thing happening on the edge of your toolpath, this cleans that up. So there's a few little interesting little tidbits. As far as the blend toolpath, there are different ways to get it to transition. Opening passes. Smooth. I would think smooth would be maybe the best. Calculate and see what happens. Go. There's now we have a lot of these lead in and lead out moves. Which they have these big sweeping arcs on them, which will help, but you're still going to see that. That will leave uh, witness warning on the track. And that's my problem. So if you have a workaround, let me know. Or if, if you're looking at this and thinking like, wow, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I, I need a solution to that exact same problem. Well, great. Jump on the, uh, the forum here and uh, contribute to this thread and we'll see where it goes. So Blend has some other interesting possibilities. So let's just say you're going to surface the top of this part. You might choose Parallel. Right, and parallel will give you parallel lines, which is probably just fine. But let's say you want something a little bit more organic. You could use blend. And you see what it did. Blend gave us lines that kind of match the contour of the part. And here's how we did that. What I did was, is for my drive curves, I just picked the edge, edges of the, the surface. And you can do, imagine what it's doing. It's trying to morph from one curve to the other across that surface. So depending on the parts that you're making, you may find this to be more desirable. To have these like organic flow lines on the surface. Many of the parts that we make where I work will have this strategy employed. So that's another interesting application for blend. And actually there's, blend is a powerful toolpath type. You can do a lot of different things with it. It would just be awesome if this strategy had the ability to do a constant spiral. Now, you can see it looks pretty good on this example here on the top. It has one lead in and one lead out. This is awesome. There's really nothing bad, nothing negative to say about that. But in this example, we have a different problem. We have all these different engagements and disengagements. That's, that's not good. So if, if we could just find a way to get this thing to maintain one spiraling motion, those, you know, one lead in, maintain constant contact, go all the way around the surface and one lead out, uh, man, that would be powerful. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate any help you can give. And look in the description of this video for a link to that forum post, as well as a link uh, where you can download this file and 
work with it yourself.